ben Burak Alanyalı Oğlu from the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering and Bilkent University and this is my term project for EE102 course. In this project I try to implement a scanning thin film thickness measurement instrument by using basis 3 FPGA board. This term project has been initialized when I first realized the linear correlation between the number of layers of a thin film and the light intensity that penetrates through it. As can be seen in this image, as the number of layers increases, the light that we see on the other side dims out, and there is a linear proportionality between them. Therefore, I decided to use a light-dependent resistor, as can be seen in this diagram, to measure the amount of light intensity that penetrates through my tin films. The resistance of an LDR decreases as the light intensity falling on it increases. Therefore, I had to take analog readings from my LDR voltage divider. For this purpose, the XADC port, which converts analog readings into digital readings, embedded on my basis tree was very helpful. Additionally, I have designed a MILI type FSM to make my basis tree communicate with my computer serially by using UART communication protocol so that the data can be received and then uh, can be processed in Python to have a 3D plot at the end. The voltage that can range between 0 and 1 volts that is passing through my LDR is converted to values that are between 0 and 255, corresponding to 8 bits. And then this analog reading is displayed on my basis tree 7 segmented display for calibration purposes, so that the user of this instrument can know the amount of light that penetrates through the crystals instantaneously. Now here comes something very interesting. I have decided to use two stepper motors in total to let my stage move in any 2D direction thanks to the handcrafted Core XY plot as you can see in the diagram right now. And with this, my stage was able to move in up, down, left, right and diagonal motions. And my stepper motors were controlled with their drivers to supply them with 12 volts to increase their torque. My stepper motors received two signals from the PMOD pins of my basis tree. One was direction pin, and zero stood out for counterclockwise rotation, and one stood out for clockwise motion. Then the stepper motor indicated a square waveform, in which the period of one square waveform uh, from the PMOD pins uh, stood out for the step size of my uh, stepper motor. Now I'm able to receive light intensity values from my STFTM thanks to XADC and LDR and also I'm able to move my stage to different positions thanks to my Core XY plot and stepper motors. Hence a 4 to 1 multiplexer will be very useful in achieving to switch between different modes of function in my STFTM. This will be for calibration, for manual using, for cursoring, for resetting and for also for uh, automatic scanning. Two switches from our basis 3 board has been selected for this mode function. For example, 00 stands for reset, where all the counters for our clock dividers stops, and also the stepper signals that are sent from our PMOD pins has to stop, so that the stage is not moving, the laser is off, and we are not reading any additional data. Then 01 stands for cursor mode, which is a manual mode that is controlled with the joystick buttons on our basis tree to move the stage to any desired position, which will be very useful for the calibration mode that I'm going to explain right now. In 10 calibration mode, we need two data from our sample. First, we have to receive a data from the uh, sample where we know that the thickness of our tin film is only one layer. Then we have to send this data to our Python code with UART protocol. Secondly, we have to switch again back to the cursor mode and then find a zone where we know that the thickness of uh, our tin film is two layers. So that our code will be able to understand how much of light intensity changes when we add an additional layer of tin film. Therefore, our system will be calibrated to any pure material. Then, the new data that will be taken in the scanning mode will be divided to this value to find the number of layers that are found on our sample. Therefore, when we take our 
shifts to our scanning mode, a finite state machine is used. And in each second of this finite state machine, 50 data is received per second and it is sent to our uh, Python code. It draws a snake-like shape to scan all the surface in 2D directions. Therefore, they will receive from all over the surface of our tin film and this, they will be used effectively uh, to draw a 3D plot. What you are seeing right now is a great example of how the rectangle prism of layers I have placed on my stage is clearly shown on my 3D plot. Therefore, what we have made overall in this project is that we have sent white LED light from the top of my sample. And then we have received how much of this light intensity has been penetrated per layer. Then by using this, we have scanned the entire surface with a finite state machine in a snake-like shape. Then we have sent this data from our basis tree to our Python code to process it into a 3D plot. Therefore, we are actually able to see how, in fact, the surface of a tin film looks like. Although it's in a micrometers level, it cannot be seen with our eyes. However, our machine is able to understand the thickness and is able to 3D plot it thanks to this property of light. Thank you very much for watching my presentation. I think this SDFTM has been a unique solution to 3D image the surface of tin films and there can be many improvements that can be made to professionally make them available in different uh, areas of interest.